Welcome to the Berlin Drawing Room. Hi everyone. This is a short video where I'll give you some pointers uh, for when you want to buy a sketchbook or start a sketchbook. Hey, I am in an art shop and I need to buy a sketchbook and I don't know which sketchbook to buy because this is huge and there is a lot of stuff and I don't know what I'm supposed to buy. So this guides you through that kind of decision process. The first thing you should choose is size. So there are a lot of different sizes of sketchbooks and I'm just gonna point out the more common three sizes you could find around, which are the, you know, a4 sketchbook, which is the size of office paper. People that like to work on location, it needs to be something you can put in a backpack. So A4 is the biggest size. Then there is a wide variety of A5 sketchbooks, and which is half the size. There are A6 sketchbooks. And A6 sketchbooks are very handy if you don't carry a backpack usually and you want something to have with you every day. This is like the pocket size sketchbook, so it's like good size for your pocket. It's the size of a smartphone, I will say. So this is useful if you don't carry much around but you always want to have a sketchbook, A6 is the way to go. So once you choose the size, the second thing you have to choose is orientation. Because sketchbooks can be portrait, which means that the binding is on this side and you open it like this. Or they can be landscape, which means that the binding is on the short side of the frame and then you open it like this. Or it can be a square one. Square sketchbooks, I had a period of time when I was obsessed with square sketchbooks and I used a lot of them. They look good, but from a drawing point of view, they're always quite limiting because if you want to draw something that has a strong either vertical or horizontal expansion, you either have to use just part of the page or you have to use two pages open side by side, which can be interesting and it was interesting for me, but I grew out of that phase. How to choose between portrait and landscape. As the name says, landscape format is good if you are planning to do a lot of landscape or urban sketching, but it's also good for a figure because you can just rotate it and keep it vertical. Personally, I prefer portrait sketchbooks because I, I tend to do a lot of figure and a lot of trees and trees are vertical and figure is often vertical. Okay, sometimes people are laying, but still. Portrait is the format that fits most often the kind of subjects I'm working with. And there is also like a psychological thing that it feels more like a book. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but like portrait sketchbooks, they feel legit somehow. So think about what kind of things you think you want to draw in your sketchbook and if you don't know what you're gonna draw in your sketchbook just go for portrait. Another thing that will, may lead your choice between portrait and landscape is availability because not all brands offer both orientations like a lot of this watercolor sketching like urban sketching kind of sketchbooks they are mostly only landscape and they don't have a portrait option so that solves your problem. So you can have a preference, but then check what is available. You decide what paper you need, depending on what technique you're planning to use most. So if you want, if you use a lot of watercolor, that's pretty straightforward. Get a watercolor paper sketchbook. Watercolor sketchbooks can hold even a little bit of wet on wet. This is a 200 and 20 or 200 and something sketchbook so you can do layers you can do wet and wet it can hold so if you want to work with watercolor get straight up watercolor paper 
not mixed media paper. The surface is so smooth that it's harder to manage clean washes of watercolor on them. Mixed media sketchbooks are more useful for inks or like markers, those kind of things. For watercolor, they're not the best choice. If you work mainly with pencil, uh, a drawing sketchbook, like a good drawing paper sketchbook is the best choice because the way the texture of the paper will allow you to shade and do nice things with pencil. You can do it on watercolor paper, but like the... it's different, you know, because it's a different paper. But what I find out after all the sketchbooks that I filled in in my years is that the best choice is to prep your sketchbook, which means that you get a sketchbook, it can be anything, you can glue in the paper uh, that you want to use for that specific technique, you can prep the page with like a watercolor ground if you want to do watercolor in that or with gesso. So you have the moment you get out of the box that Ooh, I bought a watercolor paper sketchbook, I can only do watercolor in that. Or I bought a drawing sketchbook, I can only do drawing in that. Once you get out of that box, a universe opens for you. So, this is pretty much everything. What I will say, if you're one of those people, because I had some students tell me this, like, oh, I received this beautiful sketchbook as a present, it's so pretty but I feel like I'm gonna ruin it if I don't do pretty drawings inside it. Which, it's like, it's sad, because you deserve a pretty sketchbook even if you're not gonna do masterworks inside it, because it's your space. It's like to say you deserve a pretty bedroom to sleep well at night, even if you're just sleeping. Like, we deserve to have a space that is uh, like a quality space that can welcome all the things that we want to experiment. So please, if you're in that mindset of, oh, I can't ruin this sketchbook, don't worry about it. Just fill it in. You're gonna get another one after. It doesn't matter. It's just a sketchbook. It's okay. You, you, can, you can make mistakes. It, you're supposed to make mistakes in a sketchbook because that's how you get better. So don't worry. But if you're feeling intimidated by expensive and cool sketchbooks, what I suggest is get a cheap one. Go to Tiger and get the cheapest sketchbook they have and then prep it, tape other paper in it, just go crazy on it because it was a cheap thing and you don't feel like all this pressure of performing whatever and then you will have the space to get better and experiment and do all these things. There are probably 10,000 other things that I could say on sketchbooks, because when I start talking about our materials, I could, my students know, I could go on for hours. But I think this is the basics. So you go out, getting an art shop, I have to choose a sketchbook, follow these very simple steps. What size do I want? what orientation do I want, portrait or landscape, and what technique I'm expecting to use most inside that sketchbook. And just know that even if you end up buying a sketchbook that it's not perfect for you or doesn't serve you that well, you can tweak it and adapt to it and you will learn stuff trying to figure out how to make it work. So it's not a terrible mistake, it's just part of the process. Thank you for watching this and I will, I hope I will see you in one of my workshops online. Uh, they're all listed in the Berlin Drawing Room website and I have a lot of plans for future ones. So I hope to meet you there. And if you have other questions or anything that you want to ask me, please feel free to contact me on Instagram or via email, wherever you want. Don't be shy. I like to support you all in your artistic journey. So see you in the next helpful tip clip and I wish you all a nice day. Bye. For current workshop offerings, please visit our website. Thank you for watching.